All right, let's evaluate this limit. We have the limit as x approaches negative three of x squared minus nine all over x squared plus two x minus three. So as always, the first thing when it comes to evaluating limits is you wanna plug in the value that x is approaching, which in this case is negative three. So we wanna plug in negative three into our function. And when we do that, that'll give us negative three squared minus nine all over negative three squared plus two times negative three minus three. Now, Let's simplify the top, so negative three squared is nine, and then nine minus nine is zero, and then moving to the bottom, negative three squared is nine, and then two times negative three is negative six, nine minus six is three, and then three minus three is zero. And when we evaluate this, we get zero over zero, which is our lovely indeterminate form. So unfortunately, we can't leave this as zero over zero. We can't say, oh, the limit is zero over zero, boom. No, that's unacceptable. We can't leave it in this form. Um, so what we have to do is to get out of this form, we have to use some algebraic techniques to essentially identify the holes of our function. And essentially we want to cancel out those holes because they're the reason that we are getting zero over zero. And once we cancel out those holes, we want to reevaluate our limit to see what the true value is. So to identify what the holes are of our function, what we are going to do is we are going to factor both the top and bottom of our function. So starting with the top, we have x squared minus 9. So this is what we call a difference of squares, and it's in the name. A difference of squares is basically the difference of two perfect squares, um, and there is a formula that you can use. And essentially, what you want to do is you want to take the square root of x squared, which is x, the square root of 9, which is 3, and then you want to plug in these values, x and 3, into the following formula, where it will become x minus 3 times x plus 3. Or you can do x plus 3 times x minus 3, or it does not matter. But this is how you would factor this perfect square. So moving down to the bottom, to factor the bottom, we have x squared plus 2x minus 3. This is a trinomial, and notice that the coefficient in front of our x squared well, there's nothing there really, but we can say that it's 1, really. And when the coefficient of our x squared is 1, we want to factor as follows, where we focus on the last term, which is negative 3, and then the middle coefficient, which is 2. And essentially what you want to do is you want to find two numbers that will both multiply to give you negative 3 and add to give you 2. Um, so two numbers that I can think of would be... 3 and negative 1 because 3 times negative 1 is negative 3 and then 3 plus negative 1 is 2 okay so 3 and negative 1 will be our numbers and then we will factor as follows we will become x plus 3 times x minus 1 okay now i did that pretty quickly but if you struggle with factoring i do have some more videos that you can check out that shows more examples of how this factor trinomials similar to this one so i would check those out um, so continuing on, so we've factored our bottom to become x plus 3 times x minus 1. So now we have factored both the top and bottom of our function. Now notice that in both the top and bottom, we have an x plus 3. So as you see, when we have a common factor in both the top and bottom of our function, this means that this is a whole. And this means since there is an x plus 3 in both the top and bottom, we can cancel out the x plus 3s. So we're going to cancel out the x plus 3s and get rid of these holes. And once we do that, that will leave us with x minus 3 all over x minus 1. Now I always say the key thing with indeterminate limits is you want to cancel out those holes. Once you cancel out those holes, you can reevaluate the limit because those holes are essentially why our limit was in indeterminate form. It's the reason why we're getting 0 over 0. But now that we've gotten rid of the problem, we can now reevaluate our limit and unveil what the true value is. So we're going to reevaluate our limit and plug in negative 3 into our new function. And that will give us negative 3 minus 3 all over negative 3 minus 1. Negative 3 minus 3 is negative 6. And then negative 3 minus 1 is negative 4. And then negative 6 all over negative 4 will reduce to 3 halves. Therefore, 3 halves is the answer to our limit problem. And there you have it.